More bad news for Penn State. Moody's Investors Service says it may cut its rating on Penn State's credit as the university deals with the fallout from the Jerry Sandusky child sex abuse case and sanctions against the school's football team. Penn State currently has Moody's second highest possible rating. The firm says the scandal could hurt student enrollment and fundraising. Joining us now with more on this is Andrew Gilman. He's the president and CEO of Comcore Consulting Group. Mr. Gilman, thanks for being with us. You're welcome, Laura. I understand you're a crisis communications expert. A little background here. I know you advised the University of Virginia Medical Center in the wake of their baby switching incident, and you counseled Johnson & Johnson during their Tylenol debacle, so you know a little bit about what uh, Penn State may be going through. They have a big mountain to climb right now. How does the school begin to overcome something like this? Laura, think of this crisis, this scandal, as a book. And there have been several, unfortunately, terrible chapters that have already been written. But there are more chapters that will be written. So step by step, not overnight, they can begin to recover. It was interesting today that I went online and saw the Penn State student newspaper. And their discussion was, their headline was, it's in our hands. And Penn State's going to have to do it themselves. But they, ha they have a black mark right now. Will they always have a black mark? Can the school regain the strong reputation they once had? I agree with you. There is a black mark. Every crisis has something it stands for. Tylenol probably stood for a company being victimized and their, their customers being poisoned. BP is probably one of a company not paying attention to safety. Penn State is going to st stand for sex abuse, but it could stand for something else. It could stand for commitment to education. It could stand for overcoming it and learning about child abuse and teaching others. So there are chances, but it's going to be hard work. And it's interesting, too, to hear you say that the students are saying it's in our hands, and that's a great place to start. How do you advise the school from here, though? How, and how do you get the word out to parents that this is a worthy academic institution to be trusted? Because when you have trust issues like this, uh, that, uh, that, that lasts for a long time. It's not the university per se, it's everybody who goes there. It's faculty, it's students, it's alumni, it's people who live in that community. You know, there's a little bit of, uh, it's not just everybody at Penn State thinks that they can fix it. There's a lot of anger there. Sure. I, you know, I think it a little bit like we were all kids and at some point a kid did something wrong in class and everybody got punished. That's unfortunately what happened. And so, again, they have to get a plan, they have to put it in place, they have to listen to the recommendations from the, re, from the free report mm -hmm. and take step-by-step -step actions. And then let's look out two or three years from now and see if they've actually acted on them. Absolutely.